well uh, we of course have one of the most successful indian entrepreneurs he sold mintra for a whopping 300 million dollars to flipkart helped scale flipkart and now owns one of the largest fitness startups in the country he's also now donned the author, the hat of an author mukesh bansal thank you so much for taking out the time and joining us on et now you're a media recluse we're just <laughs> discussing few years really you have interacted with the media thank you uh, for joining us congratulations on the book thank you. mukesh you're in your early 40s you've claimed to have hacked productivity so much so that now you've authored a book how did all of this happen so early on in the journey yeah i think i'll have to start with disclaimer i definitely don't think i've you know hacked uh, productivity but i've been on a journey of figuring it out i think last 10 years i've been trying to figure out how do i optimize my own performance and also understand how does performance happen mm. so for that i've been reading lot of books you know researching trying things out and you know after practicing it over you know number of years and absorbing lot of information i felt two years ago that i have got some clarity about what are the basic principles which are behind performance in any field you know whether it's sports music entertainment business and i felt you know it would be good to share that whole you know understanding with a very broad audience as much as possible i have always been a book lover so for me compared to social media you know books come easy to me i can go in my corner focus on it right i also find writing is a good thinking tool it helps me clarify my own thought process so i started working on it about 18 months ago and now you know this is a culmination of effort and um, i like to describe the book as a basically a summary of you know about 100 uh, productivity performance books plus interspersed with you know my own experience uh, seeing lot of very high performance close up you know as part of uh, not only entrepreneurial e-commerce journey but also over a period of time working with you know other high performers in sports in bollywood so it's kind of you know putting it all together into hopefully a useful book for you. all right you know uh, 100 books is what it sort of took you to uh, do this but you know are you productive because you're successful or are you successful because you're productive you know no one's born with these mm-hmm. hacks right yeah i'll be you know first of all doubtful about both <laughs> i don't know uh, i you know in my linkedin title is wip work in progress i genuinely believe that's exactly where i am i think all of us can get better and the book was kind of you know um written with that spirit i think our core idea behind the book is that all of us is you know nearly limitless potential there may be an absolute limit but our potential is way more than what we know we give ourselves credit for if we are armed with the right tools and work on a systematic structured manner and also very importantly over a long period of time i think each of us can produce you know performance which from outside may look like you know something nearly impossible to achieve you know as they say you know behind every overnight success there is usually a 10 year or 20 year journey sure. right that's really the you know kind of core idea behind the book to what happens during that 10 year 20 year journey like if you don't work with the right tools you can put in those 10 years but still you know nothing may come out of it sure. but if you are progressing every day and you're getting incrementally better then you know you can make you know magical things happen All right, you can make magical things. You also talk about in the book how you know you're not born with certain skills. Right. It's not genetics. You can yeah. sort of you know wire yourself to it. But Mukesh, why not a tell-all book on entrepreneurship? Right, that's what uh, we would have expected you of if you were to be an author. What was the trigger? Why not? Or do you plan to write something on entrepreneurship down the years? You know, honestly, it may. I I feel I'm very early in my entrepreneurial journey. you know for cure fit has been but you had quite a journey right from mintra to flipkart to cure fit now and you sort of scaled it up quite beautifully it was definitely a very good experience i think i enjoyed the journey we had lots of ups and downs and uh, i think there are a lot of learnings from that at some point i think someone needs to tell that story i just feel you know i'm not there yet right i mean i want to uh, one of the you know constant reminder to myself in my cure fit journey is to more operate like a first time entrepreneur because i don't want to take too many things for granted you know operate from the vantage point of being there done that because that also leads to a lot of blind spots and this is you know new world you know new age customer you know, media has moved on you know the way consumers interact has moved on market size is very different so in some ways you know it's as much about you know learning as well as unlearning you know what has happened in the past but yeah i hope you know one day someone writes the entire e-commerce story i think uh, i mean meher does i think has done a good job but covers you know some aspect of story but i mean there you know larger story hopefully somebody will tell someday we would be more than happy if you were to do it down the years really Let's see. but you know they say morning really makes up the your day entirely right. what is your uh, morning productivity hack what time are you up you right. know yeah. uh, oh, tell us 
Yeah, so, you know, a while back I realized you are right, you know, morning is very important, but you know, morning only happens when you get a good night's sleep. So, in many ways, you know, it starts with what time you go to bed. For me, at least personally, I recognize almost seven, eight years ago, if I can manage to go to bed, you know, between nine and ten, um, I will get good seven, eight hours sleep. I'll wake up in the morning refreshed. And then, yes, you know, morning, you know, I do a few things. One is, you know, workout is a very integral part of how I start my day. I just don't think I can have a good day without, you know, good workout at least five, six days a week, right? I also try to, at some point, early, early morning, try to uh, think about my day and mentally plan it out. Mm. What are the, you know, key things I want to accomplish in that day, especially what is the most important thing. So, a bunch of other things get ignored, but not this thing. I've gotten to practice a meditation. I still not as regular as I would like, but the days I meditate, I feel the whole day, I feel calmer, you know, don't get too much worked up, feel less stressed, you know. So, or I feel like my mind works better, right? So, these are, you know, I would say, some days I go for a morning walk, which is again, you know, extremely refreshing. Off late, I was trying to do um, my early morning workout outdoors. So, you get, you know, really good fresh air, um, uh, early morning sun, you know, I think that also makes you feel very rejuvenating. I mean, last, you know, one productivity hack I have, you know, come to know is if you start your day with, you know, uh, cold shower or even ice cold shower, if you can manage it somehow, it just really, you know, wakes you up. You feel like supercharged, energized. And now there's a lot of science, you know, backing up, you know, all the stuff that happens in the mind and body. If you're able to do that, so, you know, do try someday if you can. All right, meditation comes, uh it does not come easy to a lot of us. Right. You're saying it works for you. But yeah, I was coming to that. Uh, Twitter CEO uh, uh, Jack also talks about right. 5 a.m. ice baths right. to one meal a day, <laughs> uh, bizarre health right. habits. Uh, and anything that you have in terms yeah. of intense health habits that worked for you, you know, you spoke about right. the early morning uh, cold showers. Right. Yeah. Early. I think, you know, there are various hacks, there are fads also. But I think what really works for health are fundamentals. I genuinely believe that. And fundamentals are you need to sleep, you know, seven, eight hours. You need to be physically active, whatever works for you, you know, it doesn't really matter, walking, dance, you know, yoga, um, you can go out for a run, you can play a sport. Our bodies are designed for movement, you know, it's sitting still, you know, the there is an article somewhere on the internet saying, you know, chair is trying to kill you. Yeah. That's, you know, really the sitting fact, right? Sitting is a new smoking, exactly, right? So that, and you know, it mostly, you know, simple food. I think now there's a lot of science which backs that eating less frequently is better for you. So that our digestive system gets rest gets reset. So, I don't know whether, you know, one meal a day may be extreme, <laughs> but uh, there is a um, lot of support for intermittent fasting. And again, there, you know, you can have any variation. You know, some people will eat first eight hours of the day or last eight hours a day. I think it doesn't really matter. There are other variations where you eat regularly, but once a week. And, you know, it's not a latest fad. If you look at every single religion, every single, you know, old culture in the world has some kind of fasting practice. Yeah, yeah, and somewhere yeah. through trial, you know, they also figured it out. Fasting is good for our health. It's only now, you know, science is coming back and validating. Same thing meditation, right? In yoga, meditation has been an integral part of how yeah, yoga is yeah. done for, you know, centuries. And now science is able to map our brains and uh, able to come back and tell us, look, you know, meditation is good for you. Great, you know. But uh, you know, our grandmothers tell, you know, you come back and listen to us now once internet sort of validates Right. It. Exactly. You know, there is, in fact, a lot of stuff I talk about in the book. Uh, I also look at, you know, what is the ancient wisdom around the ancient practice. And there is a lot of it is really not new. Our language may be new. And we now may have, you know, scientific evidence and which is also useful because, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer. You know, I don't like to take anything for face value, even though people are doing for centuries. If I can also see there's a research paper yeah, which validates yeah, yeah. as evidence-based study. So, you know, every single thing I've talked about in the book, we have also referenced the original research articles. So, it's, you know, by and large science-based, but good to see. There's a lot of validation through, you know, anecdotes, through ancient, you know, wisdom, what people are following. So, yeah. All right. You know, uh, interesting insights from the book. Moving on to your entrepreneurial journey. Uh, Mukesh, you know, what's with the Bunsen's really being super successful entrepreneurs? I remember when you were at Flipkart, right. they had to clarify this all the time that the three Bunsen's <laughs> are not related. Right. What's with the Bunsen's and entrepreneurship comes naturally? Well, I would like to think the era of Bunsen's is gone, right? Last four or five years, I have not seen any Bunsen come up. So hopefully for the best. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Uh, you know, Mintra was one of the biggest exits of its time. Yeah. We hadn't seen something of that sort really. Uh, how did you detach yourself as an entrepreneur right. from an exit of that kind? You know, you yeah. blood, sweat, yeah. your right. first startup, yeah. not the first we right. talk about in the yes. other segment. You tried something early on. But was it emotionally difficult for you right. to detach? Do you still, right. are you, do you still shop on Mintra? Do you <laughs> still bug that you can yeah. uh, do this better? Yeah. 
I am a very avid shopper on Mintra. I must be like one of their top customers. I should go back and one day check, you know, where do I stack rank. But for me, you know, when we were going through the acquisition decision, you know, it was like almost like you know playing chess. You know, you mm-hmm. see the, how the game is set yeah. and what is the best move you can play. At that time, I think joining hands with Flipkart made both Flipkart and Mintra very strong against the competition which was emerging, which was you know Amazon. And I think the merger really worked out for both sides. Mm-hmm. I think you know Flipkart was obviously able to do extremely well, dominant in fashion. Mintra also got this you know protection of Flipkart, access to Flipkart customers. And Mintra has since then gone on to become the dominant you know fashion retailer in the country, online and offline. The nearest competitor is not even the 10 percent size of Mintra, right? So. It was really uh, looking at things objectively. Yes, there was an emotion, emotion atta- attached, but for me, it was you know, even post acquisition, I was very much in, you know part yeah. of the mix, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. nothing really changed. It was changed in the shareholding pattern, yeah. but otherwise, you know, the day-to-day job was quite different. Eventually, I did move on, and um, every journey was like, come to an It's important for entrepreneurs to know when to let go, also, right? No, absolutely. Yeah, you can't hold on to it. I mean, you have to you know play the odds, right? the what is the macroeconomic situation funding situation business model situation and uh, at the end of you have responsibility towards you know shareholders employees for creating a good outcome and i mean each entrepreneur i think has dreams of you know building you know trying to build something to last you know today where mintra is i think it's a fair bet that mintra will be around for next 10 years i think that's what the best outcome you know hope for as an entrepreneur right. we are glad you exited mintra because now we have care of it um, and and you're trying to sort of make Healthcare accessible to a larger pool of Indians. Uh, 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 you know, uh, was it a conscious decision for you to uh, factor it in the way that you've launched it, larger target on millenn- millennials, and not really going after to the larger set of audience, the right. older folks, really? Right. So I think we are slowly expanding our user base. Uh, I think our mission, you know, in Cureford is to make health easy for everyone, and we are on that journey. You know, to do that, we need to build a lot of different products. Slowly, slowly, you know, expand our footprint. Today it's quite you know offline heavy, but over a period of time build digital products as well. So no, I think we really do not want to limit ourselves with any age group or anyone. You know our 10-15 year vision is to make you know health easy for 100 million plus people. So we want to build a all encompassing you know platform, uh, but we have to you know build it one step at a time. All right. But Mukesh, the criticism really is that Kyofit does not focus on the form, considering right. you know these are group activities. Right. Uh, how would you really respond to a feedback or criticism like that? Yeah, I think uh, we you know we want to our group classes make uh, them fun and easy for people, right? So we are not for an expert, advanced user. The idea is if you even walk in for the first time in your life, mm. you are able to move your body, and then science shows you know just for good health you need movement. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I think form. To the, we are extremely conscious about correct form from injury point of view. Uh, we uh, very carefully track you know our injury rates. Uh, we continue to optimize our workouts so that uh, you know minimizing the chance of injury. But other than that, you know we are not really creating a product for expert advanced users who mm. want to get um, skills training etc. We just you know as long as you have good time for those 50 minutes. You and feel you worked out. Have fun also, right? Absolutely, big time because see, you know, in fitness, a drop of rate is massive because traditional gyms used to be very boring, yeah. right? I think we have solved for that. People really come, you know, you they work out their friends, they make new friends, they come out of the class, you know, energized, and that's really, you know, I think it's unless workout are you know fun. People will not stick with long period of time. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. we have you know solved that for a large extent. Right. Making workout fun and yeah. uh, getting yeah. people hooked to the platform. Yeah. Uh, when do we see something like twenty four seven Kyofit Studios? Is that something on yeah. your mind? Considering you know a larger number of millennials yeah. are out there yeah. working right. on a step out. Mumbai now the city yeah. is open twenty four seven really. I think we are actively working on it. You know when we started we used to have classes only eight hours a day. Mm. You know since then we've been increasing every year. Now there are many centers we have classes for sixteen hours. Right. I think we will follow the customer. As in, when you get evidence, customers are ready. We will we'll keep expanding our slots. On top of, you know, we are working on our um, um, live classes offering. We have launched in a pilot stage. Uh, it will take maybe another six months for us to be fully ready. But that will also be eventually a 24-hour channel. So whatever time of the day or night you feel like, you just go to your app, start, you know, join a live class, and have a go. All right. But where is Kyofit really headed in the larger scheme of things? You know. 
you will you're a sonicon too uh, you may like it or not like <laughs> it uh, will be a unicorn soon but what are the larger plans even yeah. as you go about expanding dubai is right. an interesting market yeah. uh, what's the larger plan yeah our core focus is to uh, a uh, improve our penetration in india we now have big you know deep penetration in top 5 6 cities last year we launched 12 additional cities eventually we see your foot as a you know, 100 city platform so we have a lot of work to do we are also working on additional offering last year we launched carefit which are primary care offering right now only available in bangalore but over period taking carefit to other cities we launched wholefit last year which is our package food offering sure. doing phenomenally well so scaling that period of time and then on top of all these offerings we are working on our ai coach um, platform so that not only ai coach platform absolutely right so that, see in the health people also need guidance it's only not about workout but what is the right workout for me what is the right diet for me so the ai platform will you know create personalized plans for you so that is a big bet for us we're actually working on it so you know health is a massive field there's a lot to do i think uh, you know ankit i talked about you know we think it will take us maybe 10 years to fully build out the product you know that we sent out to build it's only four years have a large vision that way and technology being the underlying right, leader absolutely. that you yeah. really but also it's a capex heavy business right mm-hmm. at least when you start off over yeah. these of course you have right. eat fit and all of yeah. that as well uh, uh, and it also discounting a bit right. of it initially to sort of get the demand going mm-hmm. how will this really pan out in the long term i think for if you look at you know compare cult with a traditional gym uh, our capex is very low if you've been to cult center you'll realize you know it's really empty warehouse kind of space very little equipment we mm-hmm. use our body as the mm-hmm. you know accessory so our capex is you know one third of a traditional gym which translates to a very very compelling return on capital um cult is you know nearly profitable i think we'll uh, we'll hit profitability on cult business quite soon and it's it's a uh, quite rare i think in indian you know st- uh, ecosystem mm-hmm. for any business with a profitability quarters, two three quarters yeah in that time frame definitely right um so we are you know overall we are quite conscious about unit economics our uh, unit economics also significantly positive so we are trying to build a responsible business with strong foundation you know the especially at a time when everyone now talks that this year will be a massive reset you know unit economics will really be important the larger ecosystem also realizing right. that it's important for internet companies yeah. to go back to the basics right, right. no absolutely i think it was always important i think you know as you go through natural economic cycles in that time of you know slight slow down people talk about profit mm-hmm. a lot more but i think if you want to really build a business to last it you need to, to have it has to be profitable right yeah, exactly all right on the larger ecosystem uh, yeah. okay you know you've been a serial entrepreneur uh, 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 you are an introvert <laughs> but you do know how the ecosystem in india right. works uh, what will it really take for us to have a silicon valley like culture for companies yeah. to go global to yeah. create that massive right. impact yeah. because the capital is available right. uh, solving so innovative india, india specific yeah. challenges yeah. some of them going global what's, what's the missing part here i think we are headed that way you know i think this uh, if you look silicon valley ecosystem it also took you know almost 40 years to build it started with semiconductors in 60s right and silicon valley in many ways came of age in 90s so i think we need to give a time india the startup ecosystem is only 10 year old but if you look at some of the you know high impact companies have already come out of it many companies have already gone globally i think number of entrepreneurs coming in every year is just increasing right and they are working on all kind of you know exciting products and services so i think we really don't need anything i think india will you know very well you know much on its way to you know uh, create a kind of parallel silicon valley and fortunately you know rooted here in bangalore so we see i mean in fact the area that we are, we are basically just a layout there are hundreds of startups here you know every other house there is a interesting startup doing something as all you know very very encouraging signs uh, yeah kormangla i just said like right. the largest hub of startups and we see how it goes last thing before i let you go uh, mukesh what is it that you do to unwind you know yeah. uh, not many talk about it but entrepreneurship yeah. is also a right. uh, stressful yeah. journey what do you do to unwind yeah move away from all the hassle bustle i think for me it's sports and fitness right you know spend get to spend an hour in the gym i feel really relaxed plus sports i think you know uh, last uh, two years i have um, restarted you know playing golf i used to play it a lot uh, it stopped somewhere in between but now the weekend i am able to find some time